Okay, hello everyone and welcome to a youth orientation part one. We're going to talk in English today, okay? <laughs> I heard that you all speak perfect English, so there's not going to be any problem. Okay, so this is part one of orientation and when we finish with this part, come in. When we finish with this part, you will move to the room next door uh, where you will have part two with Ayusa people. So who am I? Uh, my name is Irena, I'm a psychologist and I work as psychotherapist and uh, HR consultant. I was invited uh, by Ayusa to uh, talk about uh, different stuff. I'll tell you in a minute uh, what we are going to talk about today. And uh, I used to work for Ayusa for five years, uh, so I know a little bit about uh, the programs and this particular program. And uh, I used to live in the USA. I finished my high school there uh, as an Ayusa student, okay? And uh, um, I went there as a tourist for many times. I even have family there because my brother married an American and they have a big family. So I know a little bit about America too. <clears throat> what are we going to talk about today? So there is a wonderful, interesting journey ahead of you and uh, it's not going to be only easy. We're going to talk about these parts of the program that can be difficult at some points. We're going to talk about the challenges of the program and we're going to think together. I'm inviting you to think together uh, about what can uh, go wrong on the program so that we can prepare. Ayusa and Intrax wanted to thoroughly prepare you for this program. So this is the new part. They didn't have this part last year. I think there are many second comers here, people who were already on the program. Can you raise your hands? Who was already on the program? Okay, many people. So we didn't have this last year and uh, our students told us that they needed this part as well. The part uh, that's going to talk about uh, Sorry, <coughs> about your employer in the USA. Olga is going to tell you a little bit, a little bit about it. And uh, then we're going to talk about the survey results. If you remember, two months ago, we did a short survey online. Many people uh, filled in the questionnaire. And uh, we're going to talk about the results. We have some interesting results and we wanted to share it with you and to discuss it together with you. And uh, we're going to talk about the differences between Serbia and the USA. Uh, and we're going to hear from Isidora. Thank you very much for coming today, Isidora. Isidora is going to tell us a little bit about her experience and you will have a chance to ask Isidora questions. She was uh, at the same employer like uh, you, so you, you can ask her some questions. Okay, microphone to you, Olga, your employer. Okay. Good morning, everyone. Okay, so first, I'd like to thank you all for coming here today. And I know it's Sunday morning, you'd rather be in bed, but it's a little bit of work before you go to the program. So the first thing I would really like to talk about is housing. Housing is really important and you must have housing before you arrive to the States. You cannot just show up there and expect to find it within a couple of hours. It's more complicated than that. You can use uh, Airbnb, Craigslist, maybe uh, sublet.com. Those are all good sites that you can use to try to find housing. And you must find it before you arrive. You have to be proactive now and make sure that you have at least some kind of housing for the first two weeks if it's not going to be your permanent housing. Uh, the next thing that I wanted to talk about are your arrival dates. You all agreed upon arrival dates with your employer when you did your interview. For Bukhara, it is the 23rd of May. So make sure that you are at the resort on the 23rd of May. You cannot be late. That's the one and only orientation you have. And if you don't show up, you will not have your job. And also, end dates, those are the dates you agreed you would work upon. No matter how busy it is or not busy at all, you must work until the date you agreed upon. Your employer is counting on you, they need you, so make sure that you stay to that date that you agreed upon. Uh, work ethic. It's really important 
that you're professional at the job you got. You got the first, your first employer is the employer you got in Serbia, so make sure that you're always on time. If you have a second job, you uh, accept it. Uh, the first employer is the one that you got in Serbia, so make sure that you're never late to work, that you always look professional, your uniform is always ironed and clean. Always respect your managers, because the managers are always right. Uh, always smile. In America, smiling is a big thing, so make sure that you're always smiling, even if you're mad or angry or sad, just keep on smiling. And always do your best. Give 110%. In America, customer satisfaction is really important, so make sure that you give the best customer uh, service that you can. So, on the second part of this orientation, we'll talk more about the rules and regulations of the program. So you'll talk about meeting your sponsor, uh, meeting your program sponsor, my interest notifications, important documents, entering the United States, checking into my interests, social security application, insurance, taxes, bank accounts, paychecks, and direct deposits, and your grace period. The one thing though I'd like to emphasize is checking into my Intrex. When you arrive to the States, you have to check in within three days. If you do not do so, you risk not getting your social security card, and automatically you'll be not deported, but off the program. So make sure that you check in. Also, there's a monthly check-in. It's You just enter your MyInTrix account and you fill out a questionnaire. It's important that you do that as well. And um, that would be it for me. Thank you very much. Thank you, Olga. Okay, these were some very important information. Does anybody have any question for Olga? Did you understand everything? If you didn't, it's okay. Uh, we can translate in Serbian. Okay, you will have more chance to ask questions anyway. All right, so you can see by now, if, even if you were not there, that we are talking about two very different environments. Uh, Mm, there are similarities, of course, between the USA and Serbia, but uh, now we're going to cover some differences. Uh, Olga has covered something already, so I'll go briefly through this list. And uh, first of all, the laws. There are three uh, layers, three uh, uh, levels of uh, laws in America, wherever you find yourself at. Uh, federal laws, state laws, and local laws. Um, the laws that I would like to point out today are about uh, alcohol and drug abuse. So be very careful about alcohol. Uh, if you're not 21, you're not supposed to drink in the USA. Okay? And of course, about the drugs, I don't need to elaborate that. Uh, you're not supposed to use any drugs while in the USA. Okay, so culture and mentality. There are some differences in uh, American values compared to Serbian values. Let's start with punctuality. Uh, Americans are very much on time, and they insist on that. They insist on being on time. So when they say we begin at 10 o'clock, they mean it we begin at 10. You see here, we can delay five minutes or, you know, but uh, in America, we even have on universities like academic 15 minutes, which means it's okay to be late 15 minutes, right? Mm, they don't do that. If they say 10 o'clock, you better be there a couple of minutes before, okay? Uh, personal responsibility and individual versus social support. Uh, we here gravitate more towards our groups. We are used to our family group, our uh, colleague group, our friends group, and we really rely on them. In America, they rely on themselves. They're more individual. So think about that. Uh, whatever you do there, they're going to associate it with you. So it's your personal responsibility, not your group's responsibility. It's your personal responsibility. It's something new that you will learn, and it's good to learn new things. Uh, sport and hygiene. Many Americans are into sports, but really into sports. I know that many of you are into sports as well, but uh, in America, maybe it's most likely that you will not meet the person that's not into sports. 
So they do a lot of sports and also they are taking care about their personal hygiene on a very high level, which means most of them wash their hair every day. They use lots of deodorant and they will expect you to do the same. Uh, political correctness. Americans are politically correct, which means uh, they're very tolerant to, toward different groups. And you should be careful about it because in here we can sometimes make jokes about different nationalities, different races. In America it can be taken very, very offensive. So be careful with the language. Try to smoothen your language. Try to be a little bit... Sometimes some phrases like uh, that we use every day like I'll kill you or you're so crazy and they sound too harsh to Americans. So try not to use those phrases. Try to be a little bit more subtle, a little bit more smooth when you're talking in English, okay? And uh, money spending. Uh, <coughs> well, Americans spend money a little bit differently than we do. Uh, we can spend all the money we have in our wallet if we're having a good time uh, in the evening, right? Uh, they will most probably not do that. They're more, um, well, some people would say they're more selfish, but it's not selfish, it's just the, uh, uh, a different perception on money. They think they earn money very hardly and uh, so they spend it wisely. They are. Um, they will not spend all their money at once, or most of them wouldn't. Uh, keeping a secret. Americans are no champions in keeping the secret, okay? We had some cases when our students were mm, simply told their secret about, I don't know, how they like a girl or uh, they liked their boss or didn't like their boss, and the next day everybody knew it, including the boss. So be very careful when you're telling somebody your secret, be very careful and uh, think about it twice and uh, wait until you really get to meet the person before you tell them something intimate. Okay, uh, work ethics, Olga told you uh, most important stuff about uh, work ethics, but I will go through just several things, uh, procedures and trainings. In America, they usually have procedures for almost everything. Like if you're going to uh, be working on uh, washing the dishes, for example, you will get the procedure for that. And for us, sometimes it seems a little bit banal, like why do I need a procedure for washing the dishes, you know? But um, all their procedures and all their trainings are based on their previous experiences. And there is something new, there is something interesting that you are going to learn from these procedures and trainings. And other than that, uh, you can uh, as well socialize and uh, meet your boss, meet your colleagues, ask questions about your jobs um, during those trainings. Uh, so make sure you go through that. Uh, hierarchy and relationship to authority. Okay, Olga already told you that you should really respect uh, the authority, your boss, your manager, and your other colleagues as well. Uh, but I will just mention that maybe now that you see your placement, you expect your boss to be what? A middle-aged man in a suit, uh, maybe with glasses. Um, and usually you find something totally different. Usually you find, uh, I don't know, maybe a girl that's even younger than you, sometimes less educated than you, and it's kind of, what, is this going to be my manager? But yes, that's going to be your manager and you should respect that person as well as the one you have imagined. So it's really important that you have a good relationship with your, bo with your boss, with your manager, because uh, your work shifts uh, will depend on it, or your working hours. So be good to your boss, be good <laughs> to your colleagues as well. All right, and now I'll play you a short movie about the guy who didn't really get into these cultural differences, and let's see what happens. 
دینم نیست He will say a bad things, but that is because he is a liar. Okay. What things would he say? Um, he would say that I am uh, very uh, lazy. Okay. What does he mean by that? He thinks I do not uh, like at work. Okay. What about the previous job that you had? What would that boss say about you? He also say a bad thing. He a liar too. Really? Yes. Okay, so all of your former bosses are going to lie about you? Uh, there is one that will say a good thing. Which one is that? Um, he uh, from, a, uh, from a sales company, okay. but he uh, is a dead. He's dead? <laughs> yes. Okay, so we can't get in touch with him. Uh, no. Do you feel like you're the kind of person that can work well with other people? Yes, I have very good work with other people. And I want you to know that I can uh, sniff out if there is a traitor in a company. Really? And if I find them, I can finish them. Well, I really don't need you to do that. Tell me your strengths. Let's start off with your strengths. What are you good at? I am a very strong <laughs> physique. Okay. I can hold a very large woman down for up to three hours. Okay. Do ladies work here? Yes, they do. Uh, do they have a nice physique? Yes, which I have to work with you on that because uh, in our workforce in the United States, everybody's looked upon as equal as far as man and woman. What? Yes. Do you have lawsuits? Are you familiar with the term lawsuits? Court, no. Court suits? That could become a legal issue. If you give me this job, can I put a camera in the lady toilet, please? No. Why not? It, it, that is against the law. If I work here, can I work in a room with a light? Please? Yes, everybody will have a light. A great success. See, what do you want in the job? I will not work on anything that I get less than uh, six dollars for every week. Six dollars for every week. I will not work for this. Okay. In the United States, we have what we call minimum wage laws that the company has to pay you at least, in Arizona, at least $5.50 every, every hour. hour. Every hour. Every hour. But I want to work more than one hour a week. No, you work eight hours. You, you work 40 hours a week. I want more than $5.50 for 40 hours. No. I want $6. You'll get 200 $225. Uh, thank you. Thank you. Have a nice you very much. Nice to you. meet you. Nice meeting you. Nice meeting you. I hope I make a job. Okay. High five. All right. There we go. All right. Okay. We're moving now to survey results. If you remember, two months ago, uh, we did some online survey. 90% of you did this survey. Thank you very much. This is an excellent sample. We don't know what you personally said uh, in this survey, but uh, we are analyzing the results uh, based on the group, okay? And we have a huge group. So the, the survey is anonymous. Uh, uh, why is it important? Uh, generally, uh, we are going to talk about your expectations before the program and we are going to see what's realistic and what's maybe less realistic. And uh, you can ask your questions as well and you can uh, discuss it together with us. So, this is your general expectations. Like 60% of people said they expect to travel. And, of course, you will have a lot of chance to travel. Uh, 30% expect to have fun, 26% expect to earn money. I think this is all uh, very correct and very realistic. And every second student expects to uh, improve English. I think that everyone will improve their English, maybe some people less, some people more, but uh, these are all realistic. The only thing uh, you maybe missed out uh, is 
that this program is called work and travel. Okay, so there, are no, uh, there is no mention of work here. And uh, we had some items that covered work as well, like work ethics, meeting new colleagues, uh, um, getting to know American culture mm, mm, while working and stuff like that. So be careful, you're working there for uh, three or four months and uh, during that time work comes as a priority, okay? Then you'll have enough time to travel as well, to have fun uh, and everything else. Financial expectations. Some people, you see, they're very diverse. Uh, some people expect to earn up to 1,000. Some people expect to earn more than $12,000. So uh, most of the people expect to earn and bring back home. This was the question. How much money do you want to bring back home? So. Uh, between $1,000 and $5,000, I think this is very realistic and uh, I think that all of the answers, I consulted with the USA and they said all of the answers are realistic, but it depends on you, of course. So um, some people who find a second job and maybe even a third job will be able to earn a lot of money, but be careful about this because you are supposed to learn about your capacities. Are you able to work for, I don't know, 16 or 20 hours a day? It's very hard. It's like for, it's not for one day, it's for like four months. And it's very, very hard. Are you able to work weekends as well? Uh, be careful when judging, when judging yourself. It's very hard to know oneself really. Uh, so uh, be realistic about yourself. Maybe you can try and if it doesn't work, maybe you can get back to the first job. It's very important that you keep your first job because it's the carrier of your visa. Okay? Uh, expectations after the working part. 80% of you expect to travel after the first part, and of course, this is the point of the program, so you will most definitely travel. Some people expect to go around the whole America. Okay, this is maybe a little bit less realistic because America is huge. We're going to talk about that in a minute. So uh, maybe you can choose like two or three destinations where you want to go or one destination. So uh, that can be your goal for this year. And 10% uh, <coughs> of people said they wanted to work during the travel month. You're not allowed to do this, okay? We know that some people did it. Uh, uh, and uh, okay, maybe they didn't get any consequences, but uh, you're not allowed to do this because if you're caught working while during the traveling month, you can even be deported from America. So be very careful about that. And uh, these are the options uh, for solving problems at the workplace. Like what happens if you don't get along with your boss? What happens if you don't uh, like your first job? So 60% of you said they were going to find a new job on their own. And another almost 20% of people said uh, that they will ask their friend to help them find a job. I must say that this is not a correct answer. So you, if you don't get along well with your boss or if you have any kinds of troubles uh, on your job, uh, what are you supposed to do? Uh, there are three steps. Uh, uh, first, uh, some people even said that, uh, I will uh, try to resolve the conflict on my own. That's what you do first, okay? You try to resolve the conflict with your uh, employer. Then if it doesn't work, you call Intrax. If for any reason you cannot reach Intrax or uh, they don't solve your problems, then you call Ayusa. So you try to solve it on your own, you call Intrax and you call Ayusa. All right, this is a little recap. So respect the work discipline and ethics, laws and rules, 
work time schedule, job description, procedures, individual versus group responsibility, communication with colleagues and bosses, and please always remember to say please and thank you. Maybe uh, Americans will irritate you at some point for saying thank you and please, right? Um, so many times, but uh, that's their culture. So you should also say please and thank you whenever you think it's appropriate. And even more. <laughs> okay, so what are the possible consequences if we don't follow the rules? They can be very direct, very short term, or they can be long term. And uh, <coughs> they can be uh, moderate, okay? You can uh, get lower compensation, for example, uh, by getting lower working hours or bad shifts if you don't get along well with your boss, that's what we said. But also you can be removed from the program, <coughs> which means your J-1 visa is uh, not available anymore, it's cancelled. And uh, you don't have health insurance, you cannot work, you cannot find a new job. That's what happens if you don't follow the rules. You will uh, hear more specifically about the rules uh, during the next hour with uh, IUSA people on, uh, in the room next door. Okay, and there are legal procedures and some people did suffer legal consequences, okay? We had the cases of students who suffered these legal consequences which uh, vary from uh, punishment uh, of different kinds uh, to prison, deportation and even being banned entry to USA forever. So these are really bad consequences. All right. And uh, now back to the survey. We asked you what does the typical American look like according to your imagination or maybe experience. And this is what mo most people said. So he is hospitable or she, sociable, but also obese, cheerful, uh, 15 times less brave, six times less resourceful, three times less smart compared to a typical Serb. Uh, so he's three times more materialistic, two times more lazy uh, mm, compared to a typical Serb. On a positive side, a uh, typical American is what? More educated, uh, 10 times more uh, individual than a Serb. How do you imagine a typical American? Hmm? Not educated. Not educated. Two times more educated. Two times, like twice people. less educated, uh, right? 7% people that we ask, uh, do they know where Serbia is or like any, uh, any country in Europe, they think that Serbia is Syria and we are in war, or we are in Siberia and we have either snow and grass. Well, 70% people don't know where, like how countries look in Europe. Okay. So there's a lot of people that like never and like go out of like their even uh, country, like people that work, they didn't even like go out of uh, California. For example, we have orientation, and like there's like seventy percent of us from Serbia in that orientation, and like people from that like new uh, arrivals, and, like people, and so we have one lady from the Pacific Hospitality Group. She was like making a seminar how to be polite and everything. So she asked really like not in uh, intelligent question. How many of you uh, ever like entered out of your country and all we raise your hands because we are in a different country, <laughs> obviously, that we entered the, uh, out of the uh, country? So like she asked, okay, I ask stupid questions. So next question, do you go anywhere else besides Serbia? Again, we all raised our hands because you know we traveled even in Montenegro if we don't go out of our country. So like a lot of them, like they didn't even enter outside their country, so they don't know like anything like <laughs> culture, history, they're not like... Yeah, okay, and, okay. Th these are some experiences, but keep in mind, you're a very specific group. You're a group of students. You're educating yourself on the highest level, okay? I know, I'm just like saying, oh, from my experience, that they are not yes. like well-educated. Yes, like, there are okay. some, some students there in college, but they know something. But 
Okay. Okay, now, now we're going to see how you perceive Serbs, okay? I would say that you perceive Serbs somewhat like superheroes. <laughs> so they're also hospitable and sociable, no word about it, but also resourceful, hardworking, brave, some people said handsome, okay? They're three times more smart to, compared to an average American, okay? And what are these actually? These are, okay, Serbs and American uh, at the same time. And what are these actually? These are called stereotypes. There are some stereotypes among us. And uh, um, you cannot, there is not a superior or inferior nation, okay? What Isidora said now, okay, it applies to some Americans, but it's not, it does not apply to all of them. I also know Americans like that, but I know super educated Americans. And so do you, level, okay? I'm about people that I actually I know. have a chance to talk and see them. Like I know, I know. So um, you will be judged not by your background. You will be judged by your uh, individual uh, capabilities and uh, by what you do and what you say. So this is why we actually prepare you for the program. And uh, mm, mm, so there is no superior or inferior nation, okay? Okay, so Isidora, now it's your time again. It's my time. It's my time. <laughs> Thank you for opening uh, up at this previous question. So, uh, can you please share some of your experience? You can put it here. Can you please share some of your experience? <laughs> Do you all know Isidora? <laughs> You can share anything that you think will be useful for them, and you can also ask questions. You can ask questions from now on. You have 10 minutes, okay? So, as she said, like, a lot of us are second comers, so you already know, like, from yeah. the place where you've been and uh, what kind of, like, people you work with. I've been in California, so everybody knows that California is, like, a place where Mexican immigrants are usually. So. You need to know Spanish as your second language <laughs> everywhere you go. So, but they also speak English, right? Um, the yes. Mexicans, okay. Um, <laughs> so you know, you need to speak English, of course, uh, to work. Uh, did you have some specific experiences with the Mexicans? Okay. You said like I weddings. I live with. Uh, don't do that. Uh, I live with five Mexican people and six Serbian people in one house. We had a big house, of course, with like seven rooms and two bathrooms, which we were told to worry about that. And, uh, but it's like really great, like multinational experience because you have a chance uh, to live with a lot of people from different cultures and you can like try a lot of different food and you go to a lot of different places. I've been to a few Mexican weddings, that's really interesting. And uh, like, for example, I know about Mexican because I live with them. They have a lot of similarities as we are. For example, as she said about Americans, like not specific everybody, but like they have a culture that everybody is paying their own share. Like if you're, they're always splitting bills and everything. For example, we don't do that. Like if this is around on me and this is around like next one, who is paying, paying their own drinks. America don't do that, Mexican are similar to us. so. They have the same culture as we are, so if you work with them, you will see. Um, okay, do, do you have any questions for Isidora? Mm -hmm. Yes, there is one question. What was your position? On I worked as a back server in a restaurant, a uh, bistro restaurant, and like I have American servers, I have a Serbian servers, so. What is back server? Can, can uh, back say? server, uh, like, uh, for example, you have your server, like he is main and he's taking orders and everything. You are uh, like shadowing him, backing him up. Like if he needs drinks to bring the food from the kitchen, to like buzz the table, clear the table, get to, like if somebody needs new pork or something, somebody needs extra uh, glass of water, like uh, clean uh, trays and everything like. 
server. So, so that it goes faster, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. So every server have uh, their own back and their own runners. Runners are in the kitchen and they're bringing back the food and back servers are like making the coffees and so server asks what we want to drink. So like he's back with you and he said like two coffees. I don't know if you're working breakfast or mm -hmm. like lunch or dinner. So you're preparing things so the things can get faster. You're mm -hmm. always cleaning the table. Like you, you don't have, like in America, like two dirty glass on the table are unacceptable. Like you need to clear everything. When they finish, put the glass down, you need to get with the water, like pour water. They have senders for like, I, from our- uh, For everything. Yes. So uh, Americans are very polite, as you say, like if you ask someone some more what they are always going to say, yes, please. So. We think like it's something because people here are usually like, that's your job to pour me water. They're usually like, yes, please. They're always smiley, like they can get angry, but <laughs> <laughs> don't get them angry because they know their rights. Okay. Any other questions? Yes. Can you speak about accommodation? This is the biggest problem in California. Uh huh. And uh -huh. Good. So Thank you. About accommodation, they have a really strict rules. Uh, about from the, uh, they have like uh, they have um, uh, in general subleasing is illegal. You know need to know that like if somebody have a lease for an apartment and they want to sublease you, it's illegal. Just to know that you can have you can get they can get in trouble. You can get in trouble and like they have you have you need to have your ID wherever you're going. Like ID is primary because if you're sitting somewhere in a restaurant and you're like. It's passing 10, they're going to throw out you of the restaurant if you don't have ID. Even if you have a beard and gray hair, you need to have a, like ID to... Uh, what would be the right ID for our students? Is it like uh, 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 Karta? No, okay, or? it's okay with ID, mm -hmm. around mm -hmm. ID, or mm -hmm. like students ID that we are getting here, Okay. they're not acceptable. Okay. Uh, for safety reasons, uh, keep your passport at home, uh, get your ID, or even driver's license. Just uh -huh. you need to have your like your birth date and mm -hmm. like your picture. Okay, at the same so place. That's it. Yeah. Keep your passport okay. safe. Don't lose it. Okay. Any other questions? Did you have any issue during the program? Uh, like, I don't know. I have issues with riding a bike in the morning. <laughs> to be honest, that's my only issue. <laughs> I worked uh, p uh, a m shift and I worked from five in the morning to like two thirty. That's my shift, so like transportation was problem for for me. But like uh, biggest like issues with like I don't know pr problems at work, like conflict with somebody get into a fight or something <coughs> like that. No, y you know people in America are usually like they're going to help you with everything. Just that like uh, I lost a few times in L A. That was. I'll, but like homeless people call the police to like to take me from the pl pl place to place. <laughs> homeless like people yes, help you. Uh, homeless people in Great. LA are very nice. But, <laughs> like they are not hungry. They have a good so like uh, they have a good care for it. Uh -huh. homeless people uh -huh. in uh, uh -huh. Los Angeles. So they are not aggressive. They mm -hmm. are nice. Mm -hmm. They sleep at streets. But they uh, one guy asked me, "Do you hungry? Like I have leftovers from lunch. Like, <laughs> if you are <laughs> wandering around, it's too long." <laughs> so they're nice. In New York, not that much. Be careful, homeless people in New York. But it's not. Hey, know, where, where did you travel during the travel months? Um, since I lived with people from America, they're Mexicans, mm -hmm. but they are born in America. Yes. So I traveled a lot with them. Mm -hmm. They like because I worked short. Like I, I'm done with work at two, so I have all day. So every day I went to Venice Beach or Malibu Beach because they were near to Santa Barbara, mm -hmm. where I live. Mm -hmm. I've, I went hiking everywhere around. That uh -huh. was really nice. I climbed mountain, like I climbed five hours and like clouds were on my face. That uh -huh. was really interesting. Need, okay. I went to Vegas. I went to um, New York, um, uh -huh. like places around LA, Newport Beach, uh -huh. Orange County. Uh -huh. I, went, I went with my friend. Uh, she were, she's from Orange County, so uh -huh. I went with her uh -huh. to uh -huh. her parents' house. And uh -huh. I Great. Like Great. Okay, thank you very much.
Okay, so as you could see from Isidora's story and uh, our previous story, uh, uh, America and Serbia are very much different, once again, uh, concerning the area and population as well. You can see that uh, the area of Serbia is uh, taking the territory of one uh, USA state. It's uh, South Carolina and uh, the whole USA is 125 times bigger uh, than Serbia. So it's really huge, huge. And as for population uh, as well, uh, the population of New York is three times as big as the whole Serbian population. Why am I telling you this? I'm not telling you this because I want to point out that America is better than Serbia or anything like that. I just want to say that it's very different. It's really a huge country that needs very strict laws, very strict uh, government, very... Uh, and uh, uh, what we as foreigners sometimes find really rigid and uh, overly systematized is really needed in order to keep that country functioning, especially with the terrorist attacks, uh, attacks and threats lately. <clears throat> and this is what their ethnic and race background looks like. It's really, really very diverse and uh, uh, all nations mixed together in one country. They're all called Americans, okay? They come from all parts of the world and uh, they're all called Americans. So these values that we mentioned before and the laws are actually needed in order to keep their prosperity, to keep them yeah, uh, growing and uh, uh, to, to, to make all those nations live together. All right, we have a little reminder here about everything we said today. So we mentioned the big differences between the two countries, but also some similarities between uh, the people, right? Differences and similarities. Uh, we said always keep in mind the consequences of your action. Maybe this is going to be uh, uh, like the first time that you're going to make the decisions on your own. Maybe you will not have your mom there, you will not have your brother or sister there to help you with, or your friends maybe. So uh, it will be your personal responsibility. There, there is always a whole spectrum of choices. Remember that. Uh, when you say sometimes, well, I didn't have choice, there is always a spectrum of choices. You are responsible for choosing the smart choice, okay? Uh, choose the company uh, or friends you hang out with and keep in mind that the impression you leave there is uh, the, the impression of you, but also the impression of Serbia and the impression of a USA students who will come there maybe next year. So if you have any questions during your program, you can always ask Ayusa. You can always call Ayusa and ask them for your questions, your dilemmas. Okay. All right. So we are very close to the ending of this part of the orientation. I would like to ask you one question now. Uh, what is the one thing that you learned today and maybe didn't know before this presentation? You can say in Serbian as well, if it's easier for you. What is one new thing? Yes? Maybe about mentality of Americans. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Okay. Something specific or mm. all of the stuff? No, in general. Okay. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Anybody else? Okay, you don't have to say it out loud, but I would like you to think and to remember at least one thing from today's lecture so that you take it with you to the United States. And now we're going to do a small and fun exercise. Uh, you're going to write a postcard to yourself, okay? You're going to write the postcard to yourself uh, after the ending of the program. So you're going to, we have these templates here and um, And you have to uh, 
put what you want to achieve on the program, what is your objective on the program. If you don't have pens, there are many pens on the table, please help yourselves. And uh, to, to give us back the papers when you finish. You have like five minutes to finish this and uh, you will finish very fast. Um, and we'll send you back. Uh, so please make sure that you write your uh, name, uh, full name and last name and your email address. So we'll send you back the postcard when you return from the program. So that you can see what you expected before and what you did on the program.